What's up YouTube, Dar here from Zephyr Wargames and welcome back to part two of the in-depth test hands learning to play Dark World Dangers. So I have reset the deck so it no longer includes Skill Drain and Gozen as you saw in part one of this video and now we're all about going second. So we're going to start off by going doing a test hand where we basically just build our board with whatever we've got going second and ideally push to OTK. Then what we'll do is we'll start using the side deck so you can see what I take out and what I put in to make it go in second more effective. And then after that, we'll start looking at possibly playing through certain levels of opponent's interaction. So what happens if they have three interrupts? What happens if they have two interrupts? And so forth. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe. If you do have any questions, by all means, put them in the comments down below. Vote of that out of the way, and after a very decent shuffle, our first test stand of six will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is great. This is ideally what you want going second, is you want a handful of the right mixture of monsters. And what I mean by that is nothing here commits our normal summon that we don't want it to. Um, and then everything else is just free extensions, free ways of being able to interrupt, to chain block, you name it, we've got it. So we're going to start off with Genta. So obviously you would assume that if your opponent goes second, they will have some form of interruption. Whether they use it on a Genta or not is entirely up to them because usually with Genta, it's an empty board. Um, so they're better off waiting to commit something like Gate. And this is where I quite like the idea of possibly putting Gamma into here um, because you do have a couple of cards like Genta, like Gate, that you don't have a monster in order to kind of trigger. So with this hand we've got, we're in a very good position. So we're going to activate the Gate of the Dark World. Again, this might be a period where your opponent might go, you know what, I'm going to interrupt that or I'm going to stop that. If they're playing buy steals, then I honestly wouldn't drop the Grefer right here. Um, but if they aren't playing buy steals, an option that you do have off of the back of gates is you could discard the Grefer uh, and that would actually give you a form of interruption. So we'll start off with this one. So we're going to use the gates effect. We're going to banish the Genta. We're going to discard the Grefer. We're going to draw one card. On a new chain, obviously you'd go chain link one Greffa because then you want to kind of chain block and chain link two for the Genta. Genta would then summon itself back and then the Greffa will then ideally pop one of your opponent's cards um, and that's just one form of interruption. So I'm just going to use this dice right here as an indicator of how we've kind of picked a board apart or interruptions we've done. So we've got one at the moment. Then what you've got here is you've got the ability to use Greffa to bounce this back if you want to, or you can wait and save it a little bit longer on. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. What you can do here is you can normal summon your Luna because it is, you only have two cards in the deck that you want to commit a normal summon to, one of them being Luna, the other one being the Sky Blaster. By committing the normal summon of Luna, you will trigger her effect in order to search out a second copy of herself. And if your opponent was to try and activate a card or effect, whether it be anything along the lines of Skill Drain all the way up to a negate on Luna, you have that ability to chain her effect in order to kind of bounce a card. So at this point, that will then, if they respond to try and negate Luna, that, and you respond by the quick effect of her trying to bounce a card. In theory, you've then got rid of uh, three cards because you'd have the pop off of Greffa, you'd then have the negate that they've attempted to activate on the Lunar, and then you'd have the second effect of Lunar, which would ultimately lead to a negate. But we'll do it that they didn't negate the first Lunar effect, so you'll use her effect and you'll try to bounce a card. Um, obviously, starting off with putting it down to two. Q in mind as well that when doing so, you get to basically bounce them back to the hand. Um, so it does then add Luna back to your hand for you. Then obviously from this point on, you, you've cleared the board off. Yes, you conduct your normal summon, but keep in mind as well, you still have Zalamander if you want to. So what I mean by that is you can activate Zalamander's effect, discard the snow, summon the Zalamander down, and then trigger the snow's effect. Now this is probably like a little bit of a weak point because if they stop the snow here, you still have dangers to play with, but ideally you want snow to resolve and go through. In doing so, again, you unlock a couple of different options. You can go through Snow straight into like an Ascension because you've already got Greffa in the graveyard. Um, or, of course, you can go into an Archives. Or what you're probably going to go into more times than not, you could also go to a Rainbow because you've got a danger that it's not really too bad to discard that off of and you'll be able to gain back more hand advantage. So we're going to shuffle this up because now we're going to start revealing the dangers. Like We've committed our normal summon. We've done a lot of... Um, a lot of extension and really when you're revealing dangers it's rare that your opponent really wants to negate them because they'll need to negate and destroy them um, and they're basically using up one of their bigger negates so we'll go one to five six will be a reroll we get six which is obviously a reroll five so we hit the rainbow we'll summon down the jackalope 
We'll then resolve the Jackalope by drawing a card, and then of course we get the rainbow effect to search us out. So we're gonna search out a level five or higher, and because we're being aggressive, there's no reason not to go for a Greffa. Now if you want to, you can activate a Genta. In doing so, you then search out another gate. Where are we, gate? Uh, da, 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 da. Last gate, last gate, last gate, there we go. Now you can activate the gate here, but you'd be discarding the Greffa in order to pop a card. Now obviously the idea is, the reason you went with a second Greffa was to kind of pop cards, um, and then you also have the ability to kind of bounce, bounce them back to the hand, so. We'll activate the second gate. Now on the second gate, um, you can banish a Genta, but obviously it won't float. I'm gonna banish the Snow because it's one of the cards I don't really mind about being banished. Uh, and then we'll discard the Greffa, we'll draw a random card. Okay, replace a Greffa with a Greffa. This Greffa will obviously trigger to then pop one of your opponent's cards. So you've now managed to get rid of three cards in the form of Luna and then two Greffas. Uh, and then you're able to loop back the Genta to the hand with a Rainbow and then the Rainbow to the hand with a Greffa. Now, you've replenished your hand, you've gone up to a six card hand, you now reveal Ogre Pogo. Now, th the way this hand, hand kind of stops is if you hit the Ogre Pogo. And um, the reason we're putting everything in defense is it kind of puts your opponent under a full sense of um, security. They're like, okay, well, he's being all defensive, there's nothing he's going to be doing. Uh, and then that's where you can kind of spring it on them. So one to six, four. Hit a Graffa, broken. So we summon out Ogre Pogo. We draw a card. Another danger, nice. That graffer will now trigger to pop another one of our opponent's cards. So we've now cleared off four cards that our opponent has. Um, so ultimately, as they've built out their board, you're, you're pretty much chipping away everything you need to. Now, obviously, at this point, we've got a Saruja play if we want to. It's entirely up to you. Or you can go into an Underworld Goddess. That will then clear off another one of your opponent's cards. So if they've like held something back, you're pretty much clearing off a fifth card. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to reveal Sukunoko. So one to five, six will be a reroll. Three, so we hit the Genta. We summon down Sukunoko, we draw a card. Gold, okay. So now at this point, it's entirely up to you on how far you want to go. Now, if your opponent still has forms of interruption or negation, then I wouldn't go for a Saruja. If at this point where I would feel we've already cleared off four cards, I feel that they don't have anything more for me to really worry about, um, then I've got more plays to make. So we can leave Greffa on the board, you can bounce Greffa or put Greffa to the graveyard. Doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, no, I don't think there's anything there really. So we'll go into Saruja. We'll then be able to use Saruja's effect. So we'll draw four, put three back. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've already used Catalyzer this turn. We've already conducted our normal summon, so that can go, and then we can get rid of a Luna. So those four cards very easily swapped back. Now at this point, it's entirely up to you again how far you want to go, how far you want to dig. I'm gonna activate Allure of Darkness just because I wanna save my special summon off of Saruja in case I wanna use it for something else. So we're gonna draw two and we're gonna banish one. Um, I mean, Genta is probably the most useless for me right here, so we'll banish that. I'm then gonna use Saruja's effect to special summon down Fenrir. We're gonna use Fenrir's effect to search out another copy of himself, Deck Finning at its finest. Now obviously if I wanted to guarantee that Nessie would discard gold or rainbow, then obviously you'd want to minimize your chances of discarding that second Fenrir, so you'd hold that back. Um, but this way also means I don't draw into a Fenrir as well. So we'll shuffle this up. Keeping in mind we've got rid of four of our opponent's cards already, uh, and Saruja is constantly buffing the stuff that gets summoned to it. So we're gonna go one to five, revealing Nessie. We hit a one, so we hit the Lunar, absolutely fine. Nessie can now come down into attack, and we draw a card off of that. <laughs> to replace a Luna with a Luna. Absolutely fine. Uh, ideally what we wanted to do is we wanted to get gold to the graveyard because then we could start looping it back with the Greffa in the graveyard as well. So you've got two more of those. Go figure. Uh, now it's entirely up to you on how far you want to push. Now you do have the ability to do the Zelantis lock. Now the Zelantis lock you'd obviously need the ability to guarantee an OTK, but you would lose a Fenrir, you'd lose everything else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go for Muckrucker or Muckrucker. Let me go. We use these two here. And the reason we're going to do that is Muckrack's effect is going to go off and we're going to, if I discard the rainbow, how far can I go? Uh, I can get two graphers on the board here, probably a little bit more. So I'm going to discard the gold and we're going to target um, Genta. Yeah, Genta's the best thing. I'll target Genta, put that to the board. Gold effect will then trigger because it's been discarded to summon itself down. I'm locked into special summoning theme monsters at the moment, but that's absolutely fine, because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return the Genta to the hand, we're gonna upgrade that into a Greffa, and then we're gonna return this gold to the hand to upgrade that into another Greffa, 
triggering the effect of Skulldred to boost this up as well. We're then going to declare a battle phase, declare it with Fenrir. Fenrir will then target a card and banish it, so we've cleared off five of our opponent's cards. At this point, if it, if it banishes the one that it attacks, it continues to go through at 24. You've then got a free K Saruja there. You've got a 3,300, um, sorry, not Saruja, 3,000 Graffa there, 3,300 Graffa there, a 1,300 Mutraka there, and then, of course, you've got a um, 2,800 Saruja. So five cards cleared, and what I would assume would be pretty much an OTK, and then a full hand of five. Now, obviously, the full hand of high, five don't really give you anything until the next turn anyway, um, but you should pretty much, you would only go for the Mutt Racker play if you're going to push for the OTK, which is exactly what we kind of did. So that was a test hand, just utilizing the deck as it sees fit. I'm now going to do a test hand utilizing the side deck. So utilizing the side deck, if I feel that I am facing against a back row deck, I'd be going for twins um, and harpies. I'd be going for evenlies if I feel that they are producing boards. And if they are guaranteed putting two cards or more on the board in a consistent fashion, you're going to be going for Lava Golem as well. Now, ultimately here, what you've got to keep in mind is these will clash because you, you could, you'd have to give them a Lava Golem and then evenly. Um, you, there's no point in evenly and then Lava Golem because they won't have two cards on the board. So what I'm going to do here is... Let, we'll go with Twins because I think on average... You're going to be looking at stuff like Celiac, you're going to be looking at uh, Runic Fountain, possibly even Sprite Smashers, um, and other cards like that as well. So we'll keep the twins involved. So that's two, four, six, seven cards to swap out. What seven cards am I going to swap out? Well, because I'm going first, uh, sorry, going second, I'm not going to worry about Ceruli. Yes, I can give my opponent Ceruli, but it's not going to be as effective as I want it to be. Um, Luna is good going second. But the issue is, if I open up Luna and Lava Golem, I'm only going to be able to use one or the other. And ideally, the Luna effect or the um, the effect of Lava Golem is going to be much more effective for me. Not to mention it's a Fiend as well, so I could also special summon one to my board. So they're instantly the first five cards that I would take out. Purely because... Um, the Sky Blaster and the Fairy Tail clash with the Lava Golem. I don't want to. If I'm going second, considering this would be something like game two or three, I don't want that to happen. Like, this deck can play without its normal summon and still do incredibly well, but if I've opened up two normal summon cards at the same time, it can get very, very dangerous. The Ceruli, in my opinion, isn't as effective going second because you're giving them a monster on the board that you still then need to destroy. Um, it's only going to be effective if you can banish or send the gold from it because... Like, yes, you could send silver and loop them for two, but if they haven't got two cards that are going to be as heavily committed to the board, it's not overly effective. The other card that I'd highly consider taking out, in my opinion, would probably be... Um, I'm going to go with one Ascension, because I'm going to go... I'm going beat down. I'm going for an OTK, so I don't really want to be seeing Ascension. I can't use it during the battle phase. Everything else is going to be a bit restrictive. Um... I'm also going to take out a Genta, so 2, 4, 6, 7, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yep, there you go. Purely because, in my opinion, Genta is going to be less effective. Like, yes, it can help me dig for cards, but again, I'm going second, so I want to be aggressive. So when I'm going aggressive with something like this, um, I'm not really aiming to flood my ball with level 4. So I'm not going to Zeus Turbo or anything. So the only reason that I would be going second is if they've shifted during their turn, built their board. And even then, when you're looking at the decks that play shifter, usually after they shifter and they've already built their board, you're looking at a barrier statue anyway, so you can't get to a Baguska. Um, and that's where it gets a little bit tricky and a little bit dangerous. Anyway, so after shuffling these up and doing a good old cut, we will do our opening hand of six being one, two, three, four, five, six okay not a bad hand at all we've got loads of targets we want to be so we want one two three four we've got four cards that we don't mind being discarded off of a danger and we have a danger so we don't need to commit our normal summon or anything like that yet um and we'll see how many of our opponent's cards that we can deal with so reveal nessie first again like i said if your opponent wants to stop a danger they need to negate and destroy it so if they're not if they, ash blossom is going to be completely dead against them it's a free, so we hit a rainbow. So we summon down Nessie. Again, put it in defense, because at the moment you're not threatening your opponent. Draw into another Nessie, fine. Uh, Rainbow's effect will then trigger, and we're going to go straight for Graph because then we've got the Aggressor. So then what you want to do here is, again, we'll reveal Nessie. 
Um, they can then be like, oh, well, you've got two Nessies or, oh, well, you've got, got an extra deck card in there. That's a good start. Um, they can then be like, oh, you've got ne you've got two Nessies. Uh, I'm not really worried about that. You don't want to reveal Mothman um, just yet anyway. So reveal Nessie um, because at least it will reprise itself if it gets, or replace itself, sorry, if it gets discarded. And we got a five, which is Nessie. So Nessie will replace itself, which is absolutely fine. Because we're going second, we can actually be a hell of, heck of a lot more aggressive and go for a Bigfoot. So by going for the Bigfoot, obviously what you're going to be doing there is even if it does get discarded, you can still pop a card, which is another form of interruption. So we'll reveal Bigfoot right now because they know we've already got it. So we're not giving them any more information that they don't already know. It's a five. So we hit the grapher. Nice. So we summon down Bigfoot. We'll put it in attack. We'll draw a card. Grapher effect will then trigger to pop a card. So that's one form of neg either they negate it or we do pop a card, which is fine. Uh, then at this point, you can activate a law if you want to, or you can reveal Mothman. Entirely up to you on that one. I'm going to set the allure. We'll reveal Mothman. So we'll go one to four, five, six, reroll. Number one, we get a three. Ah, that's fine. Zephros, summon down Mothman. Draw a card off of Mothman. Evenly. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky with your side deck cards because it's like, right, okay, Evenly's a 100% dead card now. Like, you don't want Evenly at all. Uh, I'm then going to use Zephyros the Elite's effect and I'm going to bounce back a Bigfoot. And the reason I bounce back a big, Bigfoot is, I mean, I could bring back Mothman. It doesn't make too much of a difference. But if I do lose and discard the Bigfoot, at least I'm going to pop a card. So one to four, five, six, reroll. Two, so we hit the rainbow. Bigfoot comes down, draws me a card. Rainbow's effect triggers. Again, you're going aggression, so you want to be searching out your Genters. Uh, not your Genters, sorry, your Graffers. We're then going to use Genters effect. This will discard. This will then let us search. And we're going to go for a Gate of the Dark World. We're going to activate the Gate of the Dark World. And in doing so... <laughs> I haven't really put these uh, extra decks away, have I? There we go. So, after doing so, you're going to activate the Gate... The gate will then use its effect, you'll banish the graffa, you'll discard the snow. You can discard the graffa if you want to to get that additional pop, but I'm now going to go for the fusion spell. So we'll draw a card. Uh, Genter's effect will call it trigger to summon, so will snow to search. Snow is going to go directly for ascension. I could go for a draw play if I wanted to by searching out um, archives, but I'm not going to do that just yet. So as you can see, we've got a full board. Um, I could go for a... Um, I can go for a rank four. I can also go for a uh, link fours. I can link climb if I want to. Um, oh, that's a very, very good question. Do I go for Zelantis link climb? Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So I've got two rainbows and a Greffa in the graveyard, and I can go for Zelantis link climb. Yeah, we're going to go for a Zelantis Link Climb. Why not? So we'll put Genta back to the hand for Rainbow. We'll put Rainbow back to the hand for Graffa. We will then use all bar one level four. So whether it be Zephyrus, Mothman, doesn't really matter. Just to get the max advantage out of everything right now, I'm going to go for Saruja. Saruja will let me draw four, put three back. One, two, three, four. Perfectly fine. So we're definitely going to be putting back a Fenrir. We're going to put back the Evenly. And we'll also put back... Uh, Genta's very easy banish fodder. Put back Rainbow because I think I'm running out of targets. <laughs> so we'll put that there. Don't forget the is still set as well. I'll then use Saruja to special summon Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir would then use his effect to search out another copy of itself. There you go. Synergy. Um, now obviously by going through the Muckracker combo or the Muckracker... Um, Mutrakar and Zelantis combo, you do have to keep in mind that when doing so, you will lose whatever you put on the board. So you want to use monsters that are not fiends in order to kind of make your monsters, basically. So we're going to activate a lore. We're going to draw two. Genta is, like I said, free banish fodder. Um, banish Genta. Have we already conducted our normal summon? I don't think we have. No, I don't think we have. Which is fine. Um, if your opponent does try to use anything, obviously we've got talents to do that with as well. So we'll activate another law. We'll just deck Finn at this moment in time. Snake and Fenrir. Okay, so Fenrir is pretty useless to me right now. Like I said, I think I'm running out of targets on Rainbow, so I'm going to get rid of that. I think I've got like silver and gold left. Um, but my Ascension can pop too, which is absolutely fine. 
Uh, we'll reveal, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just, just for safety and for ease of, of draw, I'm gonna set those two. I'm gonna reveal Sukunoko. So one to six. Oh, that was a terrible roll. Even though two is benefit. Six, so we hit this. We summon down Sukunoko, we draw one card. Gold, okay, fine. Um, still need to get a Dark World to the board, and I still need to get two Degueres, which is absolutely fine. Like I said, we haven't even conducted our normal summon yet, so we still have plays to make. Let's do, let's activate Ascension. Ascension will discard one Graffa and a Snow. Um, no, Graffa and a Gold. There we go. That will go into the Fusion. That will then trigger Graffa's effect to pop, and it will also trigger Gold's effect to come to the board. We'll put Gold back to the hand with a Rainbow. We'll put Rainbow back to the hand for a Graffa. There we go. So now what you want to do is you want to use monsters that are not um, fiends in order to kind of push your plays further forward. The other issue as well is um, in order to kind of successfully resolve everything, you need to get your level four to the board after the fact. So it's very important that we haven't actually conducted our normal summon yet. I'm just trying to think if there is another way for us to get another level four to the board. Because we want to clear our opponent's board and also do some more. So, try and figure this one out. What have we got? We've got two Allures, we've got Talents, we've got Graffa and Snow. Or we just go Aggression. I suppose we just go Aggression. Fine. Um, so then what you want to do here is you want to get as many Fiends to the board as possible. So, I'm going to use Ascension's Effect to discard the Snow. Snow is going to search out the Archives. This is where it gets really important. So we're going to search out the Archives make sure, of course, you've got all the Fiends in the hand. And this is where we're going to do the Mark Crack Hard Zalantis combo. So you're going to turn Saruja into Zalantis. There we go. And then keep in mind that anything that is not a um, not a fiend will get like will not be able to come back. So you use your Mothman and your Sukunoko. Oh no, can't do that. <laughs> Fenrir is in the way. Um, you're going to have to go into the Mark Rucker. The only reason that you would keep Fenrir on the board is if they attempt to activate anything here. Um, then you're in, you're still in good stead. Okay, so then what you want to do here is you want to use Muckrucker's effect. We will discard Rainbow. Um, okay, fine. Discard Rainbow, and we will bring back any theme that is just pretty buffed, to be honest. So, Snow. Snow will be fine. Uh, and then what you want to do here is you, you've now locked yourself into Fiends and your opponent in theory. And what you're going to do here is you're going to use Zalantis Effect to banish the entire board. And then it brings all of the cards back that are Fiends. Now, it banishes the entire board, meaning that you cannot bring back monsters that are not Fiends. And because Raka makes you bring back your opponent's monsters, unless they're Fiends, you can't bring them back. So you've entered out your opponent's entire board. Um, so this is all going to be a, a free swing. So their entire board is completely gonzo. Then what you want to do, you have locked into Fiends, but that doesn't matter because you bring back Snow to the hand for Rainbow. You bring Rainbow back to the hand for your Greffa. There is a reason for bringing back Rainbow. Do not worry. Um, you then activate Archives. You then use Archives Effect, which will discard Gold. Um, do you want to do Gold first? Yeah, Gold first, fine. So you discard Gold, you'll boost... No, let's do it the other way around. Discard Rainbow. All of these, these Dark Worlds will get boosted by 800 attack. You then resolve Archives and Rainbow. Rainbow's effect will search you out a silver. There we go. And then Archives effect will discard and draw two. So you'll discard a silver or a gold, doesn't matter which one. You'll draw two. Rainbow and a danger response team. Your gold will then come back. You'll then bounce the gold back to the hand for a rainbow. And that is your end board. And you're attacking directly with this purely because you've used uh, Zalantis. All of these are fiends. You've got a full hand stacked to the brim, and then you're pushing in for game. So keep that in mind. That that's just a kind of option that you do have. Um, again, you did have to, or I, I, I kind of went a little bit further than I needed to. Like I didn't have enough to kind of pick the board apart. But the idea is that everything you do was pulling a, pulling out some form of interruption from your opponent, so that when you did decide to push in for um, the Zalantis play. Either you were completely open and free in order to do so, or um, your opponent would have to negate it, and that still left you with a decent board anyway. So, um, I think we've kind of pretty much covered how many forms of interruption your opponent has. 
So what we'll do is we'll do another test stand once I remember the gate and uh, that's my side deck stuff. So remember gate. So what we'll do is we'll do another test stand using this side deck. So utilizing, you know, going second. Obviously going second without the side deck, you just ignore evenly, you ignore lava golems and everything else like that. Okay, so now we're going to shuffle these up. We'll do one more test stand using the side deck. So after a very decent shuffle and a good old cut, our opening hand of six will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, that's actually not so bad. Obviously, you lose the you lose your battle phase, but you're able to clear house. And what I mean by that is you'll go standby, main, battle phase, end of battle phase. Now, obviously, if they've got an Omni Negate, at the very least, you'll bait that out with this, or you can bait it out with something like Catalyzer and everything else. We'll use Evenly, we'll clear their entire board, they've got one card left. Uh, we'll then use Catalyzer's effect, discarding the Grapher to summon itself down. The Grapher's effect will trigger to pop that one remaining card. Now you know you haven't got to worry about anything else, um, you can start going Genta play. So Genta will get you Gate. Obviously, this isn't going to be the most effective in the world, but you will be able to loop a couple of resources. Um, you will be able to make a controlled rank four to see you through to the next turn anyway. So by shuffling up, we'll then use uh, the effective gate to banish the Genta to discard the gold and draw one card. You then use the effect of gold and Genta both to summon. I would then personally, you can hold on to the Ascension if you want to. You can return the gold to the hand. That would be the most effective way of doing it. So you return gold to the hand. Um, you could make the Geddes, but I suppose if you made Baguska, you would guarantee to get to the next turn. Entirely up to you. So let's go, let's go greedy. Let's go Degueres. We'll ditch this to draw two and ditch one. Uh, that's sad. Um, let's get rid of Fenrir. He's of no use to me. Activate a law, draw two, banish one. Hmm. Gold's probably the least effective right now, so we'll banish that. We'll then use Nessie's effect, so one to four, five, six, reroll. Five, six, two. Hit Ascension, which is absolutely fine because that'll allow me to trigger uh, Snow. Draw one. Use Ascension's effect, discard Snow, search this out. Snow's effect will then search to summon me out or search me out a Dark World card. Uh, I don't really have Ascension, so that's of no use to me. Where do I benefit the most from? Silver can help me with a bit of a hand loop. Yeah, let's go silver for a bit of a hand loop, shall we? Could risk it and use the allure again, which I might do actually. So let's activate allure. Draw two, banish one. Snow and Ogre Pogo. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, we'll banish snow. I know, controversial. Reveal Ogre Pogo, one to four, five, six, reroll. Five, six, one. Hit the Ascension, it's a shame. Uh, but we do get to summon down the Ogre Pogo. Draw one. Nessie, okay, reveal the Nessie. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, one, two, three, four, that'll do. That does that, Nessie summons. Draw a card, nice. Zephyros, turn Nessie. Um, got a second gate. I can start making those plays. Let's do. I need to ideally get a dark world to the board. So let's do one, two, three, four. I suppose the XYZ would probably be a bit more. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to Saruja. Saruja, four, one, two, three, four. Three go back. Catalyzer has already been used. So that's one. Um, I currently don't control a dark world, so archives is not the most useful. Neither's gate. Um, I could gate, gate into archive and regain some resource. So Bigfoot and Snacky Boy, just so I can gain some resource. So what we're going to do here is we'll activate the second gate. We'll use the effect of said second gate, and we will banish. Banish Snow again. Sorry, Snow. Discard Silver, draw one. Twin Twisters. Okay, we're set for if our opponent draws some back row. Silver's effect will summon. We'll then put Silver back in the hand for... Do we have a rainbow? We didn't have a rainbow. Okay. For Graffer. 
Um, we can then activate archive. You use archive's effect to ditch this, uh, which will let us boost everything. And then you go chain link one archive, chain link two silver. Silver summons back. Uh, archives lets us discard one and draw. So if I'm not worried about back row, I ditch that. If I am worried about back row, I ditch the Nessie. There we go. Nessie and Jackalope, that's pretty cool. Uh, do we have a second Greffer? I can't remember. No, no second Greffer, sad days. Still get a special summon off of the Saruja. I'll set the response team, reveal the Nessie. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, hits the Nessie. Nessie's effect replaces itself. We'll put that into a Trooper card, but uh, let's go Mothman actually. The Mothman might help me. Unless I'm playing against Tears, and then if you're playing against Tears, you don't do that. We don't do that here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Hits the Jackalope, which means nah, Mothman summons, draws me a card. Jackalope triggers, summons me a card. So let's go for Chupacabra. Uh, I will then use Danger Response Team, target the Mothman, target the Chupacabra, return those both to the hand. Uh, I can then use Response Team's effect to put it back to the bottom of the deck and discard. Mm, let's discard Mothman. So I'll draw one off of Danger Response Team. I will then trigger the effect of Mothman to draw one, ditch one. Uh, so we'll ditch Snow. I will then trigger Snow's effect. Snow's effect will search me out. Um, Ascension, but I've only got one because I've sided out the other one. Silly, silly me. Uh, let's go with Rainbow. Uh, reveal Chupacabra. Two, hit the Bigfoot. But didn't hit the Chupacabra, so that summons and draws one. Genta. I've already special summoned Genta, so I can't special summon him again, which isn't much of an issue. I kind of want to get Rainbow to the graveyard. I mean, I could have made links to get Saruja to the graveyard and bounce everything back. So that probably would have been a smaller play. So, uh, not Saruja, sorry, Greffa. So we'll do those two IP. And Greffa can then add this back to the hand and summon itself back. Um, I've got a decent hand advantage at this moment in time. So, um, I suppose I can just leave it there. Like, my opponent's got no cards left. They're facing down an IP. Uh, obviously, the IP is not mass amount. I suppose it depends on what else is left in hand. But I've also got talents for a follow up the next turn and everything else. So IP will either become Appaloosa or it will become a Unicorn or it can become a Additional Negate as well in the form or Additional Disruption in the form of Underworld Goddess. So gets the best of everything. Anyway, that was the Go Second Test Hand video. Hopefully this has given you a, a bit more in-depth information of how you can pick boards apart, play around them and do everything else you need. If you do have any questions again at all, by all means, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And until next time, guys, as absolutely always, stay safe and, of course, happy dueling.